Today we're doing NBA imperialism, but the player's age determines how much their points are worth. So if Luka Doncic scores, it's worth 25 points. And if Steph Curry scores, it's worth 36 points. We're gonna be starting off here, spinning the wheel of NBA teams to see which team will be attacking first, and it is gonna land on the Miami Heat. Now, normally we'd spin our trusty arrow here to see which team the team will be attacking, but the Miami Heat can only attack one way, and that is the Orlando Magic. Let's get into game one. So how this works is that whenever a player scores, I pause the game, add their age to my modding software, and when I resume the game, their age will be added to the in-game scoreboard, and then whichever team is the first to reach 200 points will get the win for that matchup. With the Heat having an average age nearly four years older than the Magic, I thought they would win easily, but the Magic were unstoppable. At 21 years old, Paulo Ben Caro dropped 84 points, and at 24 years old, Wendell Carter dropped 72 to help lead the Magic to a 200 to 83 victory. So the Magic are the kings of Florida defeating the Heat right there. But we are back to the wheel to see our next attacking team. This time, it is going to be the Charlotte Hornets. Now the Hornets can either face the Grizzlies or they're getting some free land here. And I don't, what is that pointing at? That is just, if we take our cursor here and go straight out, that is just barely pointing at Virginia. So the Hornets look out here and get some free land. But that means we are right back to the wheel. The next team to possibly be attacking is the Portland Trailblazers. Usually whenever I do imperialism, the Trailblazers somehow make it to like the end without ever getting spun on the wheel so this time they're not getting so lucky uh but they have a really good chance of getting some free land here but they won't they will be attacking the kings this game was not close at all simons tried to keep it close for the blazers being 24 years old he scored 96 points it wasn't enough to stop the kings though who were led by 26 year old sabonis he ended up scoring 108 points and the kings won 206 to 116 so pretty easy defense there for the kings they pick up some good land and we are right back over to the wheel of teams attacking this time will be the Toronto Raptors. Now they are completely surrounded, so they will have to attack here and they will be attacking the 76ers, the team they had the least chance to actually attack. God, what are the odds of it landing on this little tiny space where the 76ers are? I have no idea how, but the Raptors managed to keep this game really close. So close that it was all tied up 162 to 162. From here, DeAnthony Melton scored to bring the score up to 187 for the 76ers. Scotty answered back though with a layup to cut the lead down to three. And on the next possession, Tyrese Maxey hit a game winner to give the 76ers a 210 to 167. 184 victory. Also, I don't know what happened to the 76ers court in my game files, but for some reason, it's just a blank court now. I might be able to figure out how to fix that during this video. I don't know though. So the 76ers take over Canada. And again, it hurts seeing my team be out so early. But let's spin this wheel yet again. The next attacking team will be the OKC Thunder. Few teams they could possibly attack here. Let's see who it's going to be. They're going to get a free space. And there we go. The Thunder are now in control of Kansas, which means we are right back to the wheel of NBA teams and attacking next is the dallas mavericks we're staying in the same area here let's see if they attack the thunder no the mavs get free space now mavs picking up new mexico there and we are right back over to the wheel this time it lands on the chicago bulls will we finally see a team attack here no another free space and the chicago bulls pick up iowa all right Come on, give us somebody good here. We got the Houston Rockets. The arrow's gotta land on a team now. There's a little bit of area here where they get free space. They could have Arkansas for free, but I mean, the odds are there that's not gonna happen. It's gonna land on the Thunder. The original team we landed on in this go of spins. Rockets attacking the Thunder. This game would have been a complete blowout if it weren't for Jabari Smith. He was the only player to score for the Rockets all game. At 20 years old, he ended up scoring 140 points. Unfortunately, he couldn't win the game alone. It was all around scoring for the Thunder and the Thunder won 210 to 140. So the Thunder picking up a lot of land here. Being the second youngest team, that's not too great for them because they're more likely to get attacked. But we are right back to the wheel of NBA teams. This time it lands on the Utah Jazz. So staying around the same region here, let's see who the Jazz will land on. They land 
on the Phoenix Suns. The Suns are the second oldest team in the entire NBA, whereas the Jazz are the third youngest. Despite this, thanks to Jordan Clarkson, the game stayed close. At 31 years old, Clarkson scored 155 points and a game-winning shot to upset the Suns 221-175. to 175. Durant also didn't score during the game, so that definitely helped the Jazz with their victory. Big pickup of land for the Jazz there. I don't know why the, the Suns are so bad whenever I simulate with them in 2K. They can just never seem to win games. So big pickup of land for the Jazz there. A massive upset for them. I don't think they'll make it too far in this video though. Back over to the wheel though. Next attacking team is going to be the New Orleans Pelicans. We're kind of just staying in the same area in the south here, but let's spin the wheel, see what happens. And the Pelicans are going to get some free space here. Uh, so they pick up Arkansas, which means we're right back over to the wheel. This time it lands on the New York Knicks. We're back over in the east. Lots of teams surrounding the Knicks and it lands on the 76ers. Buddy Heald and Joel Embiid were the lead scorers for the 76ers. At 31 years old, Heald scored 62 points, and at 30 years old, Embiid scored 60 points. The Knicks only had three buckets all game, one from Robinson, Brunson, and Julius Randle, which caused this game to be a pretty big blowout. 76ers won 201 to 82. So the 76ers get even more land here. Of course, we are back to the wheel to see who will attack next. And it lands on the Golden State Warriors. Warriors either attack Kings, Lakers, or they get Nevada for free. And they're going to be attacking the Kings. Warriors are a bunch of old men at this point in their careers. The youngest player on their starting lineup is Kevon Looney at 28 years old. And when you have Clay at 34 years old, Draymond at 34 years old, and Steph at 36 years old, all scoring this game, it makes it pretty easy to win. Aaron Fox did do a good job keeping the Kings in the game. At 26 years old, he scored 104 points, but the Warriors won 200 to 130. So the Warriors take control of a lot of the West Coast here, and these West Coast teams are all so old, so it's going to be interesting to see which one of them comes out of the West. Spinning the wheel yet again, though, this time it lands on the Orlando Magic. We're going to be get to see them maybe play again. I mean, with where the, the arrow is here, they pretty much play the Atlanta Hawks. Like, the odds of them getting that little tiny gap, I don't even think it's possible. Magic are attacking the Hawks. Two very young teams facing off here, and this was one of the longest games so far. They just went back and forth scoring. For the Magic, at 25 years old, Fultz scored 100 points, but it wasn't enough to beat the Hawks, led by DeJounte Murray, who at 27 years old scored 135 points and led the Hawks to a narrow 201 to 168 victory. So Atlanta takes control of Florida right there, and we're back spinning the wheel. This time it lands on the Indiana Pacers. We haven't seen them yet, I don't think. No, we definitely haven't. I mean, uh, the Pacers surrounded by so many teams here. It's got to land on one of them. Where, where's that pointing to? That is barely on the Cavs, so the Pacers are attacking the Cavs. This game stayed close throughout. At 27 years old, Donovan Mitchell scored 81 points. And for the Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton led the team at 24 years old. He scored 96 points and led the Pacers to a 212 to 151 victory. A big fall from grace for the Cavs after our last imperialism where they were unstable. Stoppable. But the Pacers pick up some good land there. All right, but spinning the wheel again. This time it lands on the New Orleans Pelicans. And they got lucky last time getting free land. Let's see if that happens again. And it does. So the Pelicans get more free land this time picking up Mississippi. And we're going right back over to the wheel. And it's going to land on the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies with a few teams around them. Also a lot of free space. And, uh... That's going to be free land. So the Grizzlies take over Alabama here, which means we are right back to the wheel. Someone's got to attack here. Come on. We got the Golden State Warriors. Get to see, uh, maybe see them play again. I mean, they, they will either be playing the Lakers or getting Nevada for free here. Let's see which it is going to be. It's pointing to the ocean. So let, let's spin it again. It's got to actually land on something that's not the ocean. They get Nevada for free. So the Warriors just getting even bigger. Come on. Be a team that can actually play somebody, the Philadelphia 76ers. A lot of potential teams the 76ers could play here. Are you kidding me? And it points to free land again. So, uh, 76ers get West Virginia. They just get even bigger. And we are right back over to the wheel. Come on, it's got to lay a blend on someone good. The Charlotte Hornets. There we go. Still the potential to get free land here for the Hornets. Let's 
Okay, there we go. Finally, we have a team attacking. The Hornets are attacking the Grizzlies. Another two young teams facing off here, and the Hornets were complete garbage this game. They really couldn't score at all, putting up so many bricks. As for the Grizzlies, it was all around scoring for everyone, with Marcus Smart leading the team, being 30 years old. He scored 90 points, and the Grizzlies won 218 to 92. So the Grizzlies are one of the biggest teams in terms of landmass now. Let's spin this wheel yet again. This time we land on the Dallas Mavericks. Mavericks completely surrounded, so they will have to play here. They will have to attack. Let's see who they will attack, though. It will be. I don't know if that's on the Nuggets or the Thunder. If we go straight out, that is just on the tip of the Thunder. Mavs attacking the Thunder. With how young the Thunder starting five is, I thought this would be a complete blowout. And it was. Led by 32-year-old Tim Hardaway Jr., who ended up scoring 96 points, the Mavs won 210 to 110. So Mavs take over a ton of land right there, kind of the divider between the East and the West now. Spinning the wheel again, we are going to land on the Washington Wizards. Obviously, they don't have much land right now. Let's spin this arrow, see who they'll attack, and... They're going to be attacking the Grizzlies. The Wizards have got to be the worst team in the game. They ended up scoring only three times with a bucket from Tyus Jones, Kyle Kuzma, and Rashawn Holmes. Everyone on the Grizzlies was getting buckets, and they won easily 216 to 85. So Grizzlies pick up a tiny bit of land here. It doesn't make much of a difference to them. Spinning the wheel again, it is going to land on the Golden State Warriors. I'm going to put the arrow down here. That way they could play the Clippers, Jazz, Lakers. And if it lands north, then... I'm just going to give them a bunch of free space up there. But let's spin this arrow. Uh, why is it lagging? Okay. And it points towards the Jazz. So Warriors attacking the Jazz. This matchup was not fair at all. The Jazz are the third youngest team in the league. And everyone on the Warriors was getting buckets this game. They blew out the Jazz 219 to 102. The Warriors definitely have the most land now with the pickup from Utah. And the Lakers and Clippers at some point are going to be forced to play the Warriors because the Warriors just surround them. And they're three of the oldest teams in the league. So those are all going to be good matchups. We're back to the wheel. There's still a lot lot of teams that we haven't even seen play yet and here's one of them the milwaukee bucks and i believe they're actually the oldest team in the nba and the bucks completely surrounded here so they will be facing somebody and that somebody will be the bulls the bucks are the oldest team in the league with an average age of 29.3 but the bulls are also one of the older teams as well and they actually kept this game really close in fact they led 121 to 120 until brooke lopez went to the free throw line and since he is 36 years old each free throw counted as 36 points this brought the Bucks up to 192 points. And at 24 years old, Kobe White hit two free throws to cut the lead down to 23 points. But the next possession, 29 year old Giannis scored to give the Bucks a 221 to 169 victory. So the Bucks conquer their first piece of land. They're going to be a dangerous team to have to face off against. But back over to the wheel. This time it lands on the Memphis Grizzlies. We're going to see the Grizzlies play yet again. I, I don't know where to put the arrow on here because they could play the 76ers or the Hawks or the Pelicans. I feel like maybe right here's a good spot. I mean, if it points south, they're playing the Hawks because there's no other team there. They're not just going to get free land. They're playing the Hawks if they go south. Let's spin this wheel. Land on somebody, please. Lands on a piece of land for the Grizzlies yet again. All right, so the Grizzlies pick up Kentucky there for free. Don't need to attack. So we are right back over to the wheel, of course. And it is going to land on the Denver Nuggets. We haven't seen them yet. Nuggets can either play the Mavs, Warriors, or get some free land. Let's see which it'll be. They're going to be attacking the Mavs. This was the closest matchup so far in terms of the average age of each team, only being separated by 0.2. Despite this, the Nuggets completely blew out the Mavs. At 27 years old, Jamal Murray scored 54 points. At 25 years old, Michael Porter Jr. scored 50 points. And at 31 years old, KCP scored 62 points, leading the Nuggets to a 223 to 77 victory. So the Nuggets go from not having much land at all to one of the biggest teams now it's either them or the warriors who have the most land i believe half the teams are gone now as well but let's spin this wheel again see who's attacking next it lands on the indiana pacers uh the pacers are completely surrounded so they will have to attack here they will be attacking 
the Pistons. We haven't seen the Pistons yet. Pistons are the second youngest team in the NBA. Despite this, they put up a decent fight against the Pacers. It was all around scoring for the team. The Pacers, on the other hand, were led by 28-year-old Miles Turner, who scored 84 points, leading the Pacers to a 214 to 132 victory. So the Pacers take over Michigan. Good chunk of land for them. And we are spinning the wheel again. Still a few teams we have not seen play yet. And we land on the Warriors. Three potential matchups for the Warriors here. Who's it going to land on? It lands on none of them. But since there's no other teams up here, I just gave the Warriors Washington, Idaho, and Montana. No one else is going to take them, so why not? Well, that means we got to spin the wheel yet again. This time it lands on the Philadelphia 76ers. I guess they're not Philadelphia anymore. And we're spinning the arrow yet again. This time it lands on the Grizzlies. 76ers attack the Grizzlies. Despite the Grizzlies being a lot younger than the 76ers, the Grizzlies took an early 102 to 62 lead. This lead did not last though, as Tobias Harris started getting buckets. At 31 years old, he scored 93 points, leading the 76ers to a 210 the 152 victory. The 76ers in complete control of the East now. They're blocking out the Nets, Celtics, and Hawks from the rest of the map. But spinning the wheel again, we are going to land on the Golden State Warriors yet again. Hopefully it actually lands on another team this time. Let's find out. It is going to land. I mean, that's close enough to the Nuggets. Warriors are attacking the Nuggets. The Warriors played like they did against the Kings in the play in here. They just couldn't get buckets and got blown out. Jokic went off this game at 29 years old. He scored 100 145 points and the Nuggets won 224 98. And just like that, the Nuggets control half the map. They're definitely the team to beat now. We are right back over to the wheel and the next team to attack will be the LA Clippers. They're just kind of chilling down here in the corner. They will either play the Lakers or Nuggets here. It is going to be the Nuggets. The Clippers are the second oldest team in the NBA, and that helped them beat the Nuggets pretty easily. 33-year-old Paul George scored 99 points, and 32-year-old Kawhi scored 64 to bring the Clippers a 216 to 137 victory. Though the Clippers go from just having a tiny piece of land here to being in control of half the US now. We are back to the wheel now. Attacking now will be the Boston Celtics. We haven't seen them yet at all in this video. So they can attack the 76ers, Nets, or get free land. Let's see which it will be. They're gonna get free land. I just gave them all the land in the Northeast here. There's no other teams up there and we don't get to see the Celtics play just yet. We're right back to the wheel spinning again this time it lands on the la lakers we haven't seen them play and they are completely surrounded by the clippers so the lakers will be attacking the clippers overall the lakers are a lot younger than the clippers but they do have lebron james as their secret weapon at 39 years old he ended up only scoring once this game though so he didn't help the team too much as for the clippers paul george scored another 99 points and led them to a 210 to 123 victory so the clippers just gaining even more land now they are in complete control of the west here only the pelicans and Spurs remain of teams from the Western Conference. But we are down to only 10 teams remaining now. Let's spin the wheel yet again. See who's attacking next. It will be the Indiana Pacers. Pacers are either going to be attacking the 76ers or Bucks here. It is going to be the 76ers. We had a really close game here. The 76ers led 169 to 148. And with the chance to win, Joel Embiid scored. And being 30 years old, he got them to 199 points. One point off the victory. From here, Obi Toppin scored to bring the Pacers to 174. Then the Pacers got a stop and Obi Toppin had the chance to end the game. At 26 years old, a bucket from him would have got them exactly to 200 points. He bricked the shot, and B got fouled, and hit a free throw to win 229-174. So the 76ers pick up even more land in the East here. I, I keep forgetting the Spurs are actually still in this. They're the youngest team in the NBA. They just haven't had to play yet. It would be funny if they made it all the way to the finals without having to play. But we're spinning the wheel yet again. This time it lands on the Brooklyn Nets. They'll either be playing the Celtics or the 76ers. I guess there's a bit of free land here they can get. I don't know. Let's let's see where this thing lands. Are you kidding me? They get, they get the free Free land. So the Nets will remain safe for now. I changed their color to gray so it doesn't blend in with the, the borderlines. Get right back to the wheel though. 
This time we land on the Philadelphia 76ers. They're going to have to play again. There is so many possible teams they could play here. Let's see uh, where the arrow goes. And that is pointing towards the Bucks. We had another close game here with everything being tied up at 81. Then Damian Lillard completely took over this game. At 33 years old, he scored 132 points and the Bucks won 213 to 104. And just like that, the Bucks control all of the East now. 76ers are out. Spinning the wheel again. Still so many teams we have not seen play yet remaining. And we land on the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, I, th I think placing the arrow up here gives them the best odds to at least play a team. There's a little tiny bit of free space here and here. Let's just hope the arrow doesn't point that way. But let's find out. If we do a straight line right there. Okay. They, get, they just get free space again. But with that now, there is no more free land over here in the east. Celtics, Nets, Hawks, they're all going to have to play if they get spun. But uh, we're right back to spinning the wheel. We are going to land on the Boston Celtics. I thought it was going to go on the Bucks again. Although the Celtics might have to play the Bucks here. It's either the Nets or the Bucks. Close enough to the Bucks, Celtics are attacking the Bucks. Led by 28-year-old Porzingis scoring 84 points and 26-year-old Tatum scoring 78 points, the Celtics were blowing out the Bucks with a 191-98 to lead. All they had to do was score once to win the game. Following this, 27-year-old Malik Beasley got a bucket, followed by Malik Beasley getting fouled, hitting two free throws, and cutting the lead down to only 12 points. The Bucks then got a stop, and Giannis had an alley-oop dunk to beat the Celtics 208-191. And the Bucks remain the kings of the East, taking over the Northeast now. I mean, the, uh, the Nets are still here, but they got most of it. Who will we get? The Minnesota Timberwolves. We have not had them yet. The Timberwolves could get some free space here. Let's get this arrow over here. Let's spin this thing. And they're going to get free space. I just gave them all the land over here because there's no other teams other than the Clippers. And the only free space remaining on the map is Missouri. Uh, so we should only get one more free space spin, if any, for the rest of the video. But that does mean we are right back over to the wheel. And this time it lands on the Brooklyn Nets. And the Nets are completely completely surrounded by the Bucks, so they will be attacking the Bucks. The Bucks are in their third game in a row now, and this was a blowout for them. Giannis at 29 years old scored 116 points, and the Bucks won 203-87. So the Bucks take up the last of the land in the east. I mean, there's still the Hawks down here with Florida and uh, Georgia. Still a few teams we have not seen play at all yet, and we're only down to six teams, but we're going to be getting the Atlanta Hawks. And just like the Nets, they are completely surrounded by the Bucks, so they have to attack the Bucks. We have seen the Bucks play so many times in a row. Despite the Bucks being a way older team, the Hawks somehow cooked them. They took an early lead off the back of a Kongwu, who at the age of 23 dropped 115 points this game, giving the Hawks a 194-115 lead. Giannis tried his best to come back, getting the Bucks up to 144 points, but Jalen Johnson hit a game winner to win 216 to 144. I cannot believe that out of all the teams the Bucks could lose to, they lost to the Hawks, but the Hawks in control of all of the East now. And that's all, all the East teams are gone. The, the Hawks are the king of the East, and there are only five teams remaining now. <laughs> Let's see who the first of them will be to attack it will be the minnesota timberwolves so they're either going to be attacking the hawks or the clippers if it goes east it's the hawks if it goes west it's the clippers let's see which direction they're going to be attacking the clippers with a bucket and two free throws from 36 year old mike conley the timberwolves started with a 108 nothing lead over the clippers unfortunately for the wolves 32 year old Kawhi scored 96 points 34 year old james harden scored 68 and a bucket from 33 year old paul george and 27 year old zubak helped the clippers make the comeback and win 224 188. So the Clippers take over all of the Timberwolves land. We were so close to having a new biggest team, but the Clippers remain the biggest team, and I think they're the favorite to actually win this thing. We are spinning the wheel again, though. Attacking this time will be the LA Clippers. Of course it is. Uh, let's see what's going to happen, though. They will be... There's nobody north, so we'll spin the arrow again. And... Who's that pointing to? Yeah, they get free land. So the Clippers take over Missouri and there is no more free land to be taken. If you get landed on, you will be attacking. We will spin the wheel yet again though. This time it lands on the LA Clippers yet again. Um, I, I don't even know where to put, let's just put the arrow here. I don't know. I don't know where the best spot to put it is. 
they will be attacking the Pelicans. CJ McCollum went crazy to start this game. At 32 years old, he scored 128 points to give the Pelicans a 190-128 lead. With an all-around effort from the Clippers, they were able to make the comeback and take a two-point lead. But with the game on the line, it was none other than CJ McCollum to hit the game-winning layup and win 222 to 192. So the Pelicans going from the second smallest team remaining to the biggest team remaining now. And we only have three teams left the Spurs still haven't played. That was also the Pelicans' first game, I believe. And now they're the biggest team. I mean, anything can happen in these imperialisms. I did not expect these three teams to be the final three remaining. I mean, I probably would have chosen any other three teams. But let's see who will be attacking in the second last game. It will be the San Antonio Spurs. They finally have to play. And they're completely surrounded by the Pelicans, so they will be attacking the Pelicans. Spurs are the youngest team in the entire league, and they put up a great fight this game. 24-year-old Keldon Johnson scored 96 points, and the game was tied up at 160. From here, Jose Alvarado got fouled, and being 26 years old, he hit both his free throws to give the Pelicans a 212 to 160 victory. And with that W, the Pelicans take over the rest of Texas, and we are down to only two teams now. We got the Pelicans facing the Hawks. We do have to spin the wheel one more time though. Whichever team it lands on, they will be the attacking team, the other, the defending team. So let's spin this thing. Who will be attacking here? It is going to be the New Orleans Pelicans attacking the Hawks in the final game. I can't believe these two teams made it to the finals though. Like they're two of the younger teams. They don't have that many older players on their team. I mean, the Pelicans do have CJ McCollum, 32 years old, I believe. That's 32 points a basket. That definitely has been helping them a lot in these games. Brandon Ingram gets blocked. Hawks now with the opportunity to get the first points. Okongwu in the post against JV, and he gets the layup. So the Hawks are gonna go up 23-0. DeAndre Hunter from three, and he drains that shot. He's 26 years old, so the Hawks are now up to 49 points. They're looking pretty good early on in this game. See if the, the Pelicans can get anything going at all. Jonas with the screen, Herb Jones from three, he can't hit the shot. DeJounte Murray from three, he drains it. They are blowing out the Pelicans so far. Pelicans have yet to score. Obviously, they have zero points. Zion inside and Zion's gonna get fouled. Now Zion's currently 23 years old, so each of these free throws that he hits is worth 23. He bricks the first one. See if he can hit the second one here. No, he bricks both free throws. Jalen Johnson getting inside, hits the layup. He's only 22 years old, so not too many points added, but the Hawks are up 98, nothing. I mean, the Pelicans have got to score something here. They've beaten so many good teams. I mean, they beat the Clippers. And we got Okongwu inside for a big dunk. And with that, the Hawks are up to 121. Pelicans, you, you, can't, you cannot get blown out here. You've got to score at least one time. You can't get 200 owed. Zion inside, and he misses it. The Pelicans can't get anything. All right, Zion on Trey Young. He's got to get a bucket here, and he finally does. Pelicans putting their first points on the board with 23 points from Zion. Trey Young, that's a tough shot. He hits it. There's no way the Pelicans... This would be an insane comeback if the Pelicans come back to win this. DJ McCollum from three. Misses it. Zion with the board, and he hits a second chance points. CJ McCollum inside, and he gets fouled. CJ is 32 years old, so each of these free throws count as 32 points. What's up the first free throw? That one's good. I mean, if he hits a second free throw, they'll kind of be right back in this thing. Andy Bricks. <laughs> Trey Young trying to put the dribble moves on Herb Jones. Not doing anything. Jalen Johnson from three. And he hits it. Another 22 points for the Hawks. They're up to 168. And the Pelicans really just need like CJ or JV to score. CJ inside. There we go. There's 32 points. They're up to 110 now. They're only down by 58. Jante Murray on the other end. And he drains the bucket. And that brings the Hawks up to 195 points. One more bucket from anybody and they win. Brandon Ingram inside, hits a bucket. I mean, he gets them 26 points. They're up to 136, but they, they just need a defensive stop or else the Hawks win this. Jalen Johnson. No, there's an illegal screen by DeAndre Hunter. I mean, the, the Pelicans are still in this thing. If they get the right guy to score, go to the free throw line. Larry Nance driving. Larry Nance puts up the shot. He hits it. That's 31 points for the Pelicans. They're up to 167. Do they have anybody that's... I don't know if they have anybody that's 33 on their team because they could win it with a 33-year-old. But Hawks just need to score one more time from anybody on the team. It does not matter for them. Jante Murray 
Step back. The Bogdanovich, and he hits the layup, giving the Hawks 31 points. The Hawks are going to win this game 226 to 167, meaning that the Hawks have conquered every single NBA team. They are our imperialism champs. I don't know how it happened. It doesn't make any sense at all, but it happened. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this NBA imperialism video. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.